Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Okayama International Circuit here in Japan. You join me on a very dreary and foggy day as we get ready for some Formula V action. Let's hope we can put some smiles on the faces of the fans who braved the weather to join us here on track today as we get ready for five red lights. We have Lynette to our right, Belil in front of us. And we are ready to go racing once again. And then we get a very good start. Lynette to our right. He doesn't look to be very quick and we make a place up. So that's P10 right off the start as we head into T1. We have Hopkins to our right and Belil right in front of us as we take it easy into the right hander and we actually get a much better corner than Belil so that is another place up into P9 already and Hopkins to our right he also is going to get past so that is three positions into the first turn that is a great start if we want to get on the podium here from the last position on the grid as we head in to the Moss S and down into Atwood Curve which is a notorious section for messing up early on cold tyres so let's see what happens here as we do have an incident two cars go off on the left as we predicted Let's quickly switch to a replay to see what happened. This is Pensieri on the inside and Mario Cabrera on the outside. Mario seems to lose the car, but then Pensieri just goes full lock to try and recover the car, but it makes his situation much worse. And we jump back on board to the live action. So those two cars, their races are ruined as we head down to the longest straight of the track into the hairpin, which is a notorious area where you can lock your front tires. So we need to make sure we do not do that on lap one. As we have Saxon, Chase and Bogger in ahead of us, let's see what happens. Three cars, four cars, cars going into this corner let's see all drivers seem to be very wary of lap one tire conditions but it looks like Blevins has had an unbelievable run on us there we lose a position down to p6 I don't know where he found the grip there but well done to him that was a good move from him but we try to stick with Blevins here in to the left hander and we're approaching a very notorious corner red man corner if you know Okayama you know this is a very very precarious corner so we take it easy as it is early stages in this race and it seems most drivers are unscathed going through there into Hobbs which is another tricky corner if you do not get your line right as we try to get a good of exit as possible but I think we touched the grass or at least we clipped it a little bit so that might compromise our speed heading into the last corner of this lap and as you can see Blevins is getting away but it looks like we will be able to be close enough to keep with the train and hopefully get some slipstream down the home straight here we go at the end of lap one a very eventful first lap of this Grand Prix as we try Try and keep up with the cars in front of us. And as you can see in the top left, the leader, Alves, he's already got a gap of around 2.5 to 3 seconds. So we need to close this gap. Otherwise, he will run away with this victory as we head into Williams' corner. And it's crucial you hit the apex of this corner to gain as much speed as possible. But we actually go very wide. So it looks like this corner is going to compromise our speed heading into Atwood. But it looks like the slipstream is so strong in the V that it doesn't really matter. And we will stick with the pack of four cars ahead of us as we head into Atwood. Let's see if we get a repeat of the first but it looks like one car has disappeared and it comes back on track and then oh my goodness that is a very unfortunate accident let's go back and see what happened there it looks like Blevins just disappeared off screen as we head into the replay Blevins presses his invisibility button comes back on track and then that's Chase he makes contact with and somehow Chase avoids our car that is unbelievable let's see it from Chase's POV as you can see behind Blevins just disappears as Peekaboo comes back on track and then hits Chase and somehow he avoids our car and saves our race so I have have to tip my hat to chase there for not driving into us but as you can see i really don't know what happened there i think blevins just got distracted by losing connection or something and he drives into chase unfortunately and that is chase out of this race and we are extremely fortunate not to suffer any damage there as we head down the straight into the hairpin as we need to refocus and get our head down because we now have p4 in the race so the podium is definitely on we've gained seven places in the space of two laps which is really good from us so now as we head into revolver and then into the left hander of piper we need to focus as we pull up to saxon and Bogarin, and we really cannot let alves get down so hopefully we can work together he has a three second gap which is gaining every second as we go around and we really need to work together as we approach Redman corner hopefully we go into this with no incidents otherwise alves will just pull away from everyone as we go into it it looks like Bogarin didn't have the best exit there and Saxon isn't going too quick either as we go into the right hander it looks like we're getting slowed down here a little bit so maybe we will need to make a pass if we want to turn this race win into a reality as we approach the final corner we really need a good exit let's try not unscrub as much speed as possible and we hit the curbing just a little bit that is pretty much perfect as we go 
a tad onto the curbing, but that is great as we're right into the gearbox of Saxon up ahead of us. So we should get a good slipstream here and make the pass into T1 if we hold the inside line. This shouldn't be too tricky of a maneuver. So let's see what happens as we approach the corner. We take it a little bit easy, but we slow down a little bit too much, maybe to give Saxon some room. But we do get the move done as he yields the position not to cause any incidents. So that's smart driving there from Saxon and myself as we try and track down Bogger in now. But as you can see, Alva's in the green car in P1. He just seems to be getting further and further away every time we look at him. So let's see if we can get Bogarin's slipstream down the straight. Maybe we can make some inroads onto P1. So let's see what happens here into Atwood. We go very, very wide. That is not great from us. I don't know what happened there. A lapse of focus maybe. But we tuck in behind Bogarin to try and get as much slipstream as possible. But let's see what happens. It doesn't look like we're gaining that far as we are already halfway down the straight. But looks like slipstream is starting to take more of an effect. We head into the inside line for the tight hairpin and we break very early. Let's see what happens with Bogarin. He looks like he's turning in on us, but he does hold his line on the outside. So that's good racing there as we head into Revolver and we have to yield the position. Unfortunately, there was no way around the outside. And as we head into Piper, we're trying our very best to get the best exit possible and try and overtake Bogarin because Alvis is just pulling away. I know I keep mentioning it, but he really is 3.1 seconds. As oh my goodness, Bogarin seems to slow down much more than he needed to. And we're forced wide, which will allow Saxon to get into P3. So that is a pretty big disaster from us. We were looking good to get into P2 and try and chase the leader down, but we're forced back a position and Saxon will say thank you very much as we look into the replay. Let's see what happens. It just seems like Bogarin and slowed down more than um, maybe we got caught napping on the brakes there but yeah we lose the position and that's not great for our race pace and we're forced to now make the move onto Saxon again let's see what happens as we head in to the final corner of the track this is just not a great lap for us it looked great at the start of it but then obviously we're losing the positions at the end of it but we have to cut away because I didn't clock this during the race but look what happens to the leader as he rounds the final corner and he approaches the straight look what happens he just vanishes in midair and I think he disconnected because that is the last we see of our there's this race so that automatically promotes Bogger and Saxon and myself up position so now we are in the podium places p3 and I don't know what kind of luck we have on our side today but it seems like everything is going right to make this p11 to p1 happen as we approach the first corner Bogarin is leading the race and without this DC from Alves I don't think we would have caught him so this is a blessing in disguise for us as Bogarin is going very slowly and I really think we have a chance to make the pass on this lap as you can see we're carrying more speed into the S's than both Saxon and Bogarin ahead of us so this is looking really really promising as we head into Atwood Curve who is that that's Saxon pulling up on the inside he's going for the move that is very aggressive and oh my goodness he just absolutely brutal his way past Bogarin and that indirectly helps us too and it looks like we're gonna gain on Saxon here down the straight so now it's a two-man race for the remaining two laps of this race and it looks like down the straight we're getting a beautiful strip stream as they pull to the right of Saxon it looks like going into the hairpin this is gonna be too wide action spicy corner coming up here lads as we pull onto the inside of the corner and it looks like Saxon was trying to squeeze us out there and take the inside line but we're, and we actually get hit by Saxon there what is going on he makes contact and we're forced to go wide and we lose a lot of speed down revolver into piper and that is not what you want to see is we're forced to go wide and it looks like i don't know what happened there but it looks like the car was unsettled as we go onto the gravel this is not good we are very flustered right now coming off of that hit from saxon and it looks like he's going to gain in to Hobbs and that is just not what you want to see. We're going to hop onto a replay here in a minute and see what kind of contact was generated by Saxon there or maybe it was our fault as we go all the way back to the Atwood curve pass by Saxon. He brutes his way and it looks like the car was unsettled there a lot and I don't think there was any contact there. So very strange and unfortunate there but as we see Saxon comes on the inside. Do we bang wheels? Oh it looks like there's a bit of net code there. I don't think we actually touched initially but we are pushed wide onto the gravel as you can see, it looks like Bogarin is going to be in contention after that incident. And it looks like the top three are going to be carrying this one home. And as we head down into Redman Corner, it looks like 
we are going to go relatively wide again. We're not nailing this corner in this race, unfortunately, but we are lucky enough to hold on to P2, so not too much damage done there. But yeah, I think overall this crash was a bit of net code and a bit of spicy racing jostling for position, so no one's at fault. No malicious contact there by Saxon. So as we head on to the final corner, we're not going to let that incident affect us as we get a much better run. He is very slow through there, and the slipstream should carry us comfortably into P1. Let's see what happens. We're not gaining that much but finally the slipstream starts to kick in as we pull over to the left hand side of the track saxon is going to have the inside line but let's see if that pays dividends for him or not as we make the move and it looks like it's going to help him out but we do get better traction as we swing over to the right hand side he is going to cover the inside so we're not going to be able to make the pass here but we should get a better run through the s's let's see what happens here it looks like he's going very defensive this is good defensive driving from saxon here as he shuts us off through the s's but it looks like we're going to go on to the outside for atwood curve let's see what happens we need really good traction through this corner and it looks like we're gonna hang it round the outside. Let's see who gets the better run up the hill. And it looks like Saxon is going pretty slowly as we get a good run on to the straight. Let's see what happens into the hairpin. Are we gonna get a repeat of last lap where we make contact? Are we gonna go a bit more clean into this part of the track? Let's see what happens. This is a great riveting race so far. Let's see what happens. Saxon is looking to be round the outside. We hold it very nice clipping the curb there but he is going to have the inside for this left hander let's see what happens and it, oh my goodness both drivers coming very close to touching again saxon does not want to give this one up he's trying to go on the inside but he shuts the door this is really really good racing and we are getting a bit chippy but i think that is all part of really good racing the adrenaline is flowing for both of us here and it looks like we're gonna go wide again we just can't nail this corner redman is proving very tricky for us today as we get a better run through hobbs so we should get a decent decent exit to head to the final corner but as you can see saxon got a much better run through there than us he's pulling away a bit 0.6 now is the delta but he like he cannot nail this last corner and it looks like we're going to get a much better run onto the green part of the outside of the circuit but there is no dq there no off track warning for us so that is a positive and looks like the gap is closing 0 0.5 0 0.4 0 0.3 three tenths now let's see what happens into turn one we need a really really solid smooth run through here and it looks like he's over he got a little bit of oversteer there and it looks like we should get a better run through here into the s's again i think the car is a bit unsettled maybe saxon is under pressure looking at us in his rear view mirror and this is the penultimate lap of the Grand Prix, so you know his heart has got to be racing, trying to defend with all he can as we take the outside of Atwood Curve. Now, let's see if we can get a bit of a tighter line than we have previously, but it looks like we're drifting understeer again. The understeer in the car is just uncontrollable, and that has allowed Boggerin to kind of edge us out up the hill, and this is not great. We really need to gain P2 back. Otherwise, our chance of winning this race is pretty much over. And as you can see, we're luckily getting the slipstream of Saxon down the straight and if Bogarin was the one who actually got that slipstream we would have been in big trouble there but we actually take the outside of the hairpin for once let's see what he does on the inside now and it looks like he's driving well through there in to Revolver and Piper and he's taking the inside so very good driving there good defensive driving from Saxon but it looks like we might be getting a bit of a better exit on to Redman let's see what happens he goes very defensive on the inside that is a very very defensive line there from Saxon. He is obviously a seasoned driver, knows how to defend his positions in first place, but it looks like we're getting a good... We're keeping good pace with him here, and we're not losing too much time. He gets a bit unsettled there again. Maybe some more oversteer through that corner as we head on to the final corner of the circuit. Let's see what we can do down the straight. This is really do or die on to the final lap as we go around the corner. We get a better exit there, and we need to tuck in behind him to get the slipstream down the straight as we enter the final lap of the race this is going to go down to the wire me saxon and boggerin we've been together this whole race and now we can finally decide a victor of this grand prix let's see what happens we try and switch back onto the inside through the first corner but it looks like we're not going to get enough grip there and saxon again going very defensive into oh he goes a bit slow there and we're forced to pull out of the corner so we do lose some speed unfortunately but it looks like he's lost speed too and the slipstream is 
is going to be very strong heading into the S's and on to Atwood. This is do or die right now, ladies and gentlemen. I do not want to settle for P2. This is going to be it. We've worked so hard for this race, going all the way from P11 up into P2. We have to make it count here as we go, go to run up the hill, but he's going to shut the door there, avoiding any chances of us getting past him. But inadvertently, he's allowing us to get into the slipstream. So maybe this is not going to work out for Saxon as we make a good run and pull to the left-hand side of the track. But as we know, he's going to have the inside onto the hairpin. So is this going to pay dividends for us as we try and leave as much space as possible heading into the hairpin good driving for both drivers as we actually stick our nose ahead into the left hander this is going to be into piper we're going to have the inside line and we're actually going to take p1 oh my goodness that is great race craft from us we took the inside of that corner and we knew we could get ahead and Saxon has to concede the position so let's jump on board we're coming down the straight here into the hairpin we're gonna see and oh my god look at that behind us again the cars are disconnecting and going invisible temporarily but into the hairpin we take the outside line good space left from us and Saxon just cannot compete because we have the inside in to Piper and that is going to give us P1 just amazing amazing racing there both drivers respecting each other's space and leaving enough room and that allows us to get into P1 so we just need to hold on for three four more corners and then we will have made the last to first challenge complete and that is unbelievable to say because when I started this race I did not think we'd be competing for P1 at the end here but looks like we're going to hold on through Hobbs and all we have to do now is not mess up the final two two corners heading into Mike Knight and now all we have to do is not mess up the final corner let's take it rather easy it looks like the gap is 0.44 tenths can JB Saxon find some slipstream down the straight but it doesn't look like he's going to and the gap is staying solid and that is gonna be P1 what an unbelievable race here at Okayama ladies and gentlemen that is an unbelievable Grand Prix as you can see started P11 ends up first oh my goodness that has got to be my favorite race on iRacing so far and I cannot believe we pulled that off if you did enjoy do not forget to slap that like button I think that performance deserves it and I will see you in the next video have a great rest of your day peace